gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. Oh, I fuck, all this going big week in my gear, Mike. Good morning, sir. How are you? We got an old sign out, Bush. Sometimes life gets you down. All you can do is put on a brave smile, take a fuckload of MDMA. One lap to go, we're into the final lap. It looks like I'm making a difference. I haven't got an order in or anything. I just thought I'd ring to let you know that we're going away this week and we're going business class. Get your hand off my penis! Hello and welcome to Cultured Fools with me, Benjamin Smith. This week we've got a little bit of a change of pace. I'm going to be reviewing three of Australia's most prominent varietals of cask wine. Yes! Cask wine is essentially wine from a box. Within that box there's a little bag and that bag in Australia is known as a goon sack. There are many theories as to why that is. Comment below if you think you know why. Now, cask wine has been rapidly declining in sales for quite some time now, and that's a good thing. It's been a kind of consumer revolution where the movement is going from cask to glass, and that's been recognised by wine organisations. So chances are, if you're walking into a shop, you're going to see less of these on the shelf and more premium wines. So with all that in mind, you may be asking yourself, why are you reviewing cask wine? Well, first of all, I'm not a snob like you. Uh, and second of all, horses for courses, eh? People like what they like. The sort of traditional market segment for cask wine is uh, typically a pensioner or someone from a lower social economic background. However, there is an exception where in the summertime, typically over a very long weekend in Australia, there is a seasonal uh, consumer who makes the most out of this. The sport known as Goon of Fortune is essentially where you attach the goon sack to a hill's hoist, which is another Australian invention. You basically stand around in a big circle, spin it round, and whoever it lands on basically gets to drink a fuckload of it. I've gone with a uh, white grape varietal because essentially you don't really want to be drinking Cabernet Sauvignon in the searing heat after eating a dodgy frozen sausage on Australia Day Eye on Speed. We have a Sauv Blanc, a blend, and a Chardonnay. All your needs are fulfilled. Winesmith Sauvignon Blanc is a bright, zesty wine that complements fragrant, grassy scents with tropical fruit flavours. Alright, well I'm not here to fuck spiders, so let's fucking get it on! Sort of star bright colour, what you'd expect from a Sauv Blanc. Uh, yeah, looks perfectly reasonable. Ooh, that does smell like a Sauv Blanc, it's very grassy. A kind of green pepper capsicum thing going on. South block. It's a south block. It's um, there's a decent amount of acid. Very very short finish. It's not a good quality wine, but if I was playing Goon of Fortune and I was on the receiving end of this, I'd happily get that down my gullet. I think I think it'd have to be cold as fuck. But, uh, yeah, presentable. If I was to give this a rating with a meme, it would be... Spring Rock is a delightfully fresh white wine that's perfect for your next family get-together. Spring Rock, come off the hour, come off the fucking dry white. Star bright colour again, it's perfectly reasonable. Um, this is a blend, so... Oh, then there's nothing really on the nose at all. It doesn't smell. It just smells of the glass. I don't really know what to say. There's like a hint of like a tropical fruit, but very very small amount. Well, that's not a good start. But let's have a go. Well, it brings a lot more flavour than it does on the nose. Very tropical. Um, a bit too sweet for me. It's meant to be dry and crisp, but I don't really get that much crispness or dryness. It's pretty sweet, quite syrupy, it doesn't go anywhere at all. I don't really know where that takes you, unless the answer is steaming into a group of strangers with your 
set of car keys in between your fingers. If I was to give this a rating with a meme, it would be a... Uh, Alex! 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 Oh, can, please. Last, but not least, the Chardonnay. The Bortoli Premium Chardonnay is made in a fresh and fruit-driven style allowing the natural fresh peach and melon characters of Chardonnay to be accentuated. Ah, oh, well, this takes me back to my summer in Burgundy. Um, it looks like a Chardonnay. It's got that kind of classic dark colour. Um, let's see what it's like on the nose. It's got that Chardonnay smell, very kind of buttery, vanilla-y essence. More tropical fruits again. Let's have a go. It's got a little bit too much acid, I think. You get that whole kind of like Chardonnay, here comes that sort of buttery vanilla thing going on and it's just like cock blocked by a load of acid. So, no, again, it's not massively good quality, but definitely tastes like a Chardonnay. In the same way that, you know, Domino's Pizza is definitely looks like a pizza. Rightio, uh, if I was to give this a rating with a meme, it would more than likely be... The door's not closed! Alex! Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honour to announce that the 2021 Goon of the Year Award goes to Winesmith Sauvignon Blanc. I would strap this to your hill source and get it spinning ASAP Rocky. Well, you wouldn't Adam and Eve it, but we've only gone and got our second email. This is from Louise in St Kilda, Victoria. Thank you very much, Louise. Keep the emails coming in, everyone. Um, Dear Ben, my grandfather smoked his entire life. Okay. I was about 10 years old when my mother asked him to quit. She sat him down and explained if he ever wanted to see his grandchildren graduate, he'd have to stop immediately. Tears welled up in his eyes when he realized what was at stake. There and then he stopped. Enough was enough. Three years later, he died after a brief but aggressive battle with lung cancer. Little did my mother know, she gave, when she gave him the ultimatum, he'd already crossed the Rubicon of his life choices. My family were decimated with grief. Five years later, my mother passed away to a long-standing medical problem and on her deathbed, she pleaded with me to never smoke. Don't put your family through what my father put us through. Be the change and appreciate what you have and never take that for granted. That was 15 years ago and next month I turn 30 and in that time I can happily proclaim I've never touched a cigarette in my life. So with all this in consideration, I have massive regrets because your YouTube channel has given me cancer anyway. Regards, Louise.